jag har rest omkring i världen och hittat intressanta musiker som... De gör inte musik för att de vill åka limousin i slutändan utan de, de gör det för att det är viktigt. De Men, gör sin grej. De gör sin grej. Och eh, idag har vi åkt till eh, USA och träffat en ung herre vid namn Connor. Eh, mm. Berätta lite om Connor. Eh, Connor har alldeles precis fyllt 18 år och har lyckats ta sig från sin lilla eh, hemstad St. Johnsbury i Vermont till college i Montreal. Men vi slet tillbaka honom till eh, hans föräldrahem i St. Johnsbury där han spelade in sin debutskiva som heter Handwriting eh, i sina föräldrars källare. Eh, och då, han, då, hans föräldrar har ingen aning om att han gör musik vilket gör det hela ännu mer intressant. Det kommer bli svårt att hålla det hemligt snart så bra som ja, musik är. Eh, den är väldigt inspirerad plattan av hans uppväxtår och hans mm. high school år. Hur, hur var stan? Alltså, hur, hur hör man det på St. Johnsbury är en av de dystraste platser jag har varit på. Det är rent, alltså det är väldigt fint. Men det känns som om hela stan är nedläggningshotad. Eh, hela orten var egentligen beroende av en kattmatsfabrik som låg där. Eh, men som låg ner för nästan 20 år sedan. Och sen dess så har sagt att säkert allt bara försvunnit. Det går inte att åka buss eh, dit och det går inte att åka tåg utan du måste ha en bil för att ens ta det därifrån. Vilket Connor inte har. Mm. Så det är ett program om bristen på transport, bristen på kattmat och vacker musik. Mm. Välkomna till St. Johnsbury. I'm Connor. I make music and I'm 700 years old. Can you somehow manipulate my voice? I'm gonna be fucked if I see my parents. Yeah. They're seriously gonna kill me. So we're uh, going to get breakfast. What are you gonna get? Uh, cream cheese bagel, man. You should get the locks. Really? Yeah, we don't need Seriously. Uh, take this right. Here's Nick and Morgan. <laughs> All right, this is Aaron Munson. He's uh, I'm from Canada. also known as Vection. Or Ilk. Or Ilk. Uh, he's from Montreal, Quebec. And he's my future bandmate. Hi. We have grand things planned. This is Nick Scribner. He's from St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Hi. Uh, we went to high school together, and uh, we've endured the torturous, you know, activities that take place in this, this town and at the academy. And uh, I'm actually living with him in Montreal, Quebec, uh, where we go to college. And then this is Morgan Ben Simon. She's uh, from France. Uh, she is my high school friend slash... Uh, slash my friend. Nick's friend. They're very, very good friends. Music was my escape from this crap town. Living in the city seems much less overwhelming. Like there's there's always things to do and like you don't get very you don't get like so incredibly bored that you want to jump out of a window for fun. And that's what happens around here. Or if you're locked in your basement by your parents. <laughs> I locked myself in the basement. Well, I, I wasn't locked in the basement. Well, you're you're home on time. Enough nights to be bored, right? Yeah, I was bored a lot. Plus, my parents wouldn't let me go out with friends. That's what I mean. Yeah, which sucked. So. <laughs> The 
reason why the, the vocals are so hushed on a lot of my tracks, like especially on this album, was because I was living with my parents at the time. So I couldn't sing very loudly or else they'd hear me. So uh, the reason like <laughs> a lot of a lot of the lyrics are uh, kind of you know not not very articulate or uh, I don't really enunciate at all because you didn't want them to come down and kick your ass well because like sometimes I'd be recording something and they'd walk right in while I was recording it like in the middle of a note if I was being a little loud and it'd just be like oh hi dad <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> Most of the most of the stuff was recorded during during the school year last year. Yeah, actually, all of it was recorded during the school year last year. Well, I remember how you used to talk about your school yeah. before you moved to Montreal. It sounded like out of a fucking awful movie. Oh, it was the worst school ever. Like it's pretentious boarding school in town. I got I got like in school suspension for two days for not shaving my face and stuff like that. Are you guys getting food? Yeah. But you have to pay for it. Since I have to pay for it? Yeah. Why? I, I know I, I owe you 15 bucks, but I... No, I'll, I'll pay... Oh, I'll, fuck, fuck. Because <laughs> I forgot my wallet. Fine, I'll pay. <laughs> Fuckers. Wait, I forgot my wallet, too. I'm gonna get a uh, sesame bagel toasted with uh, lox and onions. And cream cheese. Okay. Better do it right. <laughs> Sometimes they don't. I think I'm gonna go for the same thing as you. It sounds really? good. Yeah, the, the problem is their locks is sometimes a little old. <laughs> I used to spend two to three quarters of my life on the internet talking to other people about music and just like hanging out in IRC and downloading files and making music and whatnot. Like, while I was living here, I didn't really have a, I had a social life, but I didn't actively pursue it, you know? Music came first and then Hanging out with people came second. And it's not that I was antisocial or introverted. Well, I guess I was somewhat introverted, but I had my friends and I hung out with them on the weekends and stuff, but every day after school, I'd, I'd come home directly afterwards if I didn't have detention and uh, just start making music. It actually got so ridiculous. Like at one point, um, when we first got the internet here, they only had dial up. So, uh, I found out the password to the, the internet because my mom didn't want to give it to me because uh, if I knew it, I'd be on all the time. But I found it out and uh, I was dialing up every day after school and I, I'd on for like six and seven hours. And um, the, the phone bill was like $380 or something like that. So uh, that's when she decided that I was addicted to the internet. But have your parents changed their mind now when it's actually records coming out and interest from God? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. They don't know about it at all. Like, I, I haven't really told them that I make music. Like, they know that I make music, but they don't know that I make it seriously. Like, they don't know that I'm releasing an album or anything like that. So, uh, eventually I'm sure they'll hear about it and they'll, they'll get some answers and stuff. But at this point, they know pretty much nothing about my involvement with type records or anything like that. I, I think I'm, I'm always going to be making music with a bit of an edge, so to speak. So uh, I don't want, you know, I don't want my parents to hear songs about, uh, you know, raping an elephant or anything like that. I, I, I just don't, I can't have that. So what do you think of your bagel today? It's kind of gross, actually. Yeah, I give it a B minus. See, the problem with this bagel it's not the bagel itself or the cream cheese, it's the lox. The lox is, it tastes like it's been, you know, sitting in a, in a cupboard for four years. It's like dry and stiff and tastes fishy. It's not supposed to taste fishy. Well, I believe I'm going to sample some. <laughs> Connor's seconds. Mm. See what I mean? Old. Well, it just tastes like fish, you know? It's not supposed to taste like fish. It's salmon, man. It's supposed to taste like fish. It's a 
So this is where you spent the worst years of your life, eh? Uh, all four of them, yep. This place sucks. Sucks a donkey dick. <laughs> Can we go in through here? We're probably gonna run into my little brother or something, like, <laughs> lifting weights. Hi, Stacy! Good, thank you. That's Josh Soffron. He's gonna let us know he's gonna die. All right. <laughs> I can't let you guys in because it'd be my line, my neck. How long are you going to take? Probably 15 minutes. Okay. I can take you in for 15 minutes, but after that, you all have to. All right. Right now? All right. It's all right. It's a random improv. What? <laughs> you went to a weird school, man. Yeah. Tell me about it. No, no, no. You tell me about it. <laughs> I never <laughs> I went have here. Been. <laughs> you just experienced it. Yeah, at least the piano was in tune. I used to come here to, you know, get some excitement in, you know, just to see some uh, decapitated cows. It's pretty uh, atmospheric place, if you will. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty fucked up. Interesting odors too. Yeah, it smells really bad. How's it going? Good, you? Good, what are you doing? I'm uh, just hanging out. How's your ear? Uh, I fell on the party last night. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. What are you doing tonight? Uh, nothing. Oh, what are you guys partying up or something? I think we might be going to Nick's house, but I'm not sure. All right, well, actually, I am sure that we're going to Nick's house. Yeah. So you should stop by. Yeah, definitely. That'll be so Good awesome. Food, uh, you can try it. Is it old? No, I had yesterday. I'm going to eat some. Right. All right, there we go. Bye. So how often would you come to the cemetery? Uh, usually once a week, twice a week. This is Ayuf, right here. Yeah, this is the grave where we had always come to to hang out and uh, not do illicit substances. <laughs> so we usually just sit back Long, you know, chill out, whatever. It's crazy last day. So when you croak, do you want to be buried in the cemetery? <laughs> Maybe, but I want to. I want to get like a big boob sticking out of the ground. Something that will will people will make sure that I've been here. You know, 
people will know. Oh, that's Connor. Look mm. at the tit. <laughs> <laughs> that breast is very detailed. And it's coming out of the ground. That's fantastic. Maybe that's a bad idea. What would be funny to be buried under? A picture of yourself. <laughs> At some point, I should probably start telling my parents what I'm doing. Just because it's kind of getting old, you know? I feel like they should probably know where I am. Uh, at least, at the very least, but um, Especially if you're in town. yeah, <laughs> yeah, they'd probably be pretty upset with me if they knew I was sitting here. Are right you now. worried about running into mom at the price chopper or something while you're oh, buying hell cigarettes? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Terrified of the parents. I'm not even afraid of the cigarette part. I'm afraid that, afraid of the part, the fact that I'm in town and I haven't told them that I'm here. You know, they're probably gonna be pretty. Uh, Miffed. Unless they never find out. Can I borrow your cigarette for a second? <laughs> I was so hungry. Cannibalism is bad. Cannibalism is good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to tell them that. Didn't you try to... Are they... Is this saying? recording or something? Can they hear us? Yeah. They can hear us right now? Likely. Holy <laughs> shit. So this used to be the, uh, the main industry in St. Johnsbury. Nobody seems to want to do anything with the building, so we used to just come here and hang out and, you know, do whatever. <clears throat> I kind of like this place just because how representative it is of St. Johnsbury as a whole. There's a welcome center up there near the Video King parking lot and stuff, which used to be a railroad train station where passengers would be able to get on and, you know, take a train to Boston or Montreal. But they closed that down, I think, 20 years ago. Wow, so it's really isolated now. Yeah, like, you, it, there's, there's no way to get out of this town, like, unless you have a car. Um, there's a taxi service, but that doesn't take you to, you know, any, you know, White River Junction where you can catch a bus to New York or Boston or whatever. Like, they used to have a bus line that came in here, the, the Green Mountain Transit, I think it was called, but they stopped coming because they only had like four passengers for a bus or something like that. So do you think moving away from St. Johnsbury has given you more perspective on the time you spent here? It's given me more perspective on my life. And, you know, yeah. when you're here, you get so sucked into your own thing and you feel like everything matters so much at any certain point in time, any given point. Like, you get so weighed down by trivial bullshit and it's so healthy to get away with that, get away from it, you know. One of the reasons I released this album was so I could take people here, you know, without having them have to travel, you know. Like, it, it, I'm, I hope it affects people in the same, like, nostalgic way that it does me. I'm not sure if it does, but <clears throat> it's, it's pretty much just an amalgamation of, a, you know, the, all the feelings I've had since moving here. When I come here, I, my, I get really emotionally strange. And I can't really like, I can't really um, gauge how I should be feeling because I feel like one thing all the time when I'm here. You just feel like everybody's on this sinking ship and we all know it's going down. You know, there's a look of desperation in all of our eyes at all times.
This is my parents' house, uh, formerly my house, and uh, my parents don't know that I'm here. <laughs> now, why didn't you tell your parents you were coming back to Vermont? Because I didn't want them to know. <laughs> why would I? It's embarrassing. Do you not get along with your parents? I get along with them, I guess, but they... I don't know, I guess I get along with them. The door's unlocked. <gasps> Bell. Yes. I guess I want to see what they've done to my room. Oh my god. They started buying stuff for themselves. This, this, this flat screen. Oh, here's my sketchbook. Nice. So I guess this is my dad's room now. Interesting. So where's the room where you wrote your album? It's in the basement. Hi, Stuart. Yeah. Hi. How are you doing? Good. I'm only here for five minutes. Wow, the basement's really clean. That's my brother, Stuart. Hi. Stuart, uh, I think I'm gonna have to take the Xbox. Why is it? Yeah, I mean, this is this is about it. I mean, I sat down on this computer and, you know, I had my guitar. I used to plug uh, this microphone that I stole from a. Japanese learning software. This is my speaker. Well, did you do a clean sweep? Stuart, I had like two, two to three albums worth of extra material on there and someone deleted it all. That's a shame. Yeah, like pretty damn good stuff. Yeah. Well, that sucks. Um, okay, we should probably leave before my parents get home, back. What? Mom is what? Probably wants to see you. Just, you can't make sure, you have to make sure she doesn't know that I was here. Please. Because if she knows that I was here and I didn't stop by, she would kill me. I'm here for... Jody does know From, how, by who? Um, you know, somebody saw you in the who saw me? There is a note for me? That's an interesting development. Huh? Dear Connor, I would love to see you or talk to you while you're in town. We miss you. I'm in I'm at the laundromat and work, but please page me and I'll be home ASAP. Love you, please at least call mom. That is sad. It's nice though. <sighs> I feel terrible, but uh, we gotta go, I guess, so. <laughs> Vi har lärt oss lite grann av dagens program. Vi har lärt oss att man ska vara snäll mot sina föräldrar. Mm. Träffar han sin mamma till slut? Du, eh, vi lämnade honom verkligen precis där det här slutar. var det sista vi såg av Connor. Eh, så, men jag hoppas verkligen, alltså för alla, alla involverade skull, eh, att jag, han måste ha ringt till mamma. Ja, vi hoppas det, hoppas det. Vi har också lärt oss att man bör göra eh, uppvaktning av sin hårddisk lite då då. Verkligen, det där är så knäckande med tanke på hur bra Connors musik är och att två års inspelningar, just när han säger That was pretty good recordings uh, och just lite liten axelryckning, ja. det är jättemärkligt. Ja. Uh, mer information om Connor finns på svt.se. Nästa vecka ska vi åka till Japan, det blir kul. Ja, gud vad roligt. Mm. Vi ska träffa en man som heter Tori Kodo som är krukmakare i södra Japan klart. Ja, och gör musik under namnet Maher Shalal Harshbas. Det blir spännande. Missa inte det. Tack för ikväll.